Hi guys, I'd like to introduce you to the Western Striker Stainless Steel Hopper Spreader. It's an all stainless construction. It's got wraparound welds for strength. Um, stainless is a very popular um, hopper uh, construction for the strength that it provides, um, as well as the corrosion resistance of a stainless steel. This particular unit, we have multiple capacities and lengths, uh, all the way from a seven foot, one and a half cubic yard unit to a very large um, 10 foot, six cubic yard unit. Uh, with a number of different sizes in between one eight foot, two nine foot, and two ten foot um, sizes. We also offer multiple motor types, not all always in the same size. For example, this, this seven foot, one and a half only has our electric, but we also have a Briggs & Stratton gas, a Honda gas, and on our two larger units, the nine foot and the ten foot units, we have a dual hydraulic option as well because those tend to be put on central hydraulic trucks that require extra strength to get material moving. Um, the dual electric is where we're able to innovate a lot because with a gas engine, it's, it's a gas engine and dual hydraulics are dual hydraulics and there isn't a whole lot of, of stuff that you can do fancy with it. But with our electric motors, we can do some neat things. For one thing, because a dual electric motor, like a dual hydraulic motor, allows you to control both the spinner and the feed independently, uh, you can in fact set um, a feed speed that's low to get low material density, but a wide spread to get a lot of coverage with that little amount of salt, or vice versa. Um, you all, we also have, as part of this, our uh, accessory board and accessory rack, which allows you to plug in units and then um, snap the modules, controlling them into the rack here to keep uh, what we call here the mailbox um, relatively clean and of, of clutter, because usually uh, an electrical system can wind up looking like a bowl of spaghetti after a while. Um, one of the reasons that we have this mailbox here is because inside this environment, this is where the salt is coming out, and this, is, this would normally be covered in an operational environment. Where the salt's coming out, it's very wet, it's very corrosive, it's very bad for electrics. So what we did is we put all the electrics, we sealed them away as much as we could or completely pulled them out of the chute so that they're not in the corroded area or the corrosion prone area. In addition, um, we do allow for a couple of uh, features here on the, on, the, um, on the spreader. For example, um, if you were to uh, open up this unit with the control off as we have, and you can see over here it says DU, that means dump. What you can do is when you press this button right here, you can dump material out of the back of the hopper. Now that's important for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, the, uh, the user may want to simply empty out the hopper at the end of the day. It's sort of advised to get the salt and corrosive material out of the hopper at the end of the day. But beyond that, <clears throat> very frequently on a job site, you might want to spread some salt with, say, a walk-behind spreader or a bucket and a, and, a, and a scoop or whatever. And many um, users prefer to just carry everything in the hopper, dump it out, you get your salt, you move on, you do your, the rest of your job. <clears throat> the other thing that we have at the end of this particular hopper that is a convenience feature is a work light button where if you press that button, the work lights come on. Um, it spares you a second trip up to the cab when you realize you get back here and it's dark and you can't see what you're doing. Um, also, we have some self-diagnostics. As you can see, the, um, this unit shows dump at this moment. Now, were I to close this chute back up and power the unit on, now the unit, for safety reasons, the motor's been disconnected, but now the unit thinks it's operating. If I open up the chute now, it's an unsafe condition and it starts, starts showing a fault we call chute not present and it'll flash at you. At this point, you have to go back and correct the condition, closing the chute back up, clear out the fault code, and now you're ready to go back into operation. This is superior to a lot of other diagnostic methods because it, you don't have to count beeps, you don't have to count flashes, you don't have to do anything else. You just have to read the code and then if, if it's a weird code, you go to the owner's manual and consult it and see what, what happens to have been the problem. We like this particular unit as well. It's got a nice backlit LED. You can make it good and bright. When it's on, it's on to whatever setting. You can tell what setting you've got it on. Say you have it on max and max. You're just blasting material out. All right. The nice thing is that with the unit off, as you're driving from one site to another, you can actually adjust the settings on your unit. Say. One's a big box store where you just want to throw salt as, as far as possible, but then the next one's, say, a supermarket with cars everywhere and you want to bring the pattern in. You do that, and then when you get to the new site and you turn it on, it's at the new setting. 
The other thing that this does is it has a blast button. So when you blast, say, at a corner, an intersection, something like that, you turn it on, you blast out material, turn it off, it goes returns to the setting that you originally set it at. Um, the accessories, if they're hooked into our accessory board, are controlled through the control. Doesn't allow, doesn't require additional uh, switches inside the cab. And the nice thing is that if you have an accessory installed into our accessory setup, then if it's present, it will light up on the control. You'll know you can use a particular accessory because its label is lit up, and then when you turn it on, the button lights up. The other thing that we've done, and this is on all of our hoppers, the hydraulic, the gas, as well as the electric, is some neat things we've done with the chute. For one thing, we've got a shutter deflector down here that helps control the material, make sure it goes where you want it to go. This is a full par uh, passenger side. Basically, the only opening is here. As the spinner spins around in a uh, clockwise direction, it tends to throw material this way and no further than about this way. Then the additional area in which we manage to control material coming off of the hopper is through a chute design that has incorporated a pair of baffles because what we found when we did spread pattern testing, and sort of common sense will tell you this, there's two places on the hopper you want to drop salt sand or salt sand mix in order to make sure it goes away from the truck and not into the truck. So basically the back half of the spinner, as the spinner rotates, that back half is what carries it out this way. If you dro drop it on the front half, what actually happens is it goes back into and under uh, the, the truck, which is you know suboptimal because you don't really want to rust your truck out. A um, couple of other last little things about this particular unit that we like. Um, although the work lights and the strobes are an, are an accessory accessory, we do know from our end users and from our dealers there's certain features that have to be on every steel hopper. You really need to have them when you order it. One of those is a top screen. It helps break up clumps of salt as you're dumping it in. And then an inverted V whose main purpose is to keep all the weight of the salt. It's, it's to break up the weight of the salt so that the conveyor can get going when you start it up and continue to feed material. It helps make sure that you don't jam up your, your hopper. Um, the other thing that we offer are ratchet straps for stabilization, particularly on the larger units. It, you want to make sure that that thing doesn't move around. You absolutely have to bolt it into the frame of the truck, but the ratchet straps are there for additional stabilization of the unit should you desire it. Um, and then basically, I, I have to tell you the best part of this particular hopper is that based on extensive research and market study, we have ensured that every single size, and weight, and motor combination is comparably priced to equivalent hopper spreaders in the marketplace.